EFM 89.9. Good morning. I'm Nadia Hassan bringing to you your morning headlines. Before we actually get into the news and the papers, there's one little recurring theme that I keep seeing the whole thing run through, which if you opened your papers today, you probably guess. It is this little purple ad by Cadbury. This is the sun, but wait till you see. It's basically what you also see in Sinar. You also see it in the star. So yeah, every, you know, it's making lemons out of lemonade, essentially, or good things out of chocolates. Basically, Cadbury has gone on a very simple thing saying, all is good, enjoy us again. You know, talk about taking bad publicity and turning it into the bad thing. They even have a hashtag called Cadbury Halal. You wonder how much it costs them, but you know what? Any publicity, even bad publicity, is still good publicity. Now, looking into the actual headlines, well, basically the Sun and Sina run the same thing, being Jaius got rebuked. So this story is concerning Jaius, who apparently dragged out uh, this bride out of a Hindu wedding ceremony because she had a Malay-sounding name. And eventually it turned out that uh, this lady was... Uh, registered as Muslim on her IC by her dad, who they haven't seen in 20 years. But the point of the matter is, although this news was reported a few days ago, the Jais have been brought to task, not only by Tun M, but also by Slango and B. Khalid. Now, this, this is interesting. Both of them have basically taken Jais apart and said, like, look, you know, there's ways of interpreting it. This is not the right way to do it. And surely enough, you know, although there is a standard operating procedure when it comes to these kinds of raids, you have to ask yourself, did it require dragging her out on her wedding of all days? Couldn't you have picked another day, you know, one before or after to do this? But to do it publicly definitely has drawn a lot of criticisms as it should. I mean, there has to be a standard operating procedure. There was one after the Bible raid a couple months ago. And so now it's them, are they choosing to follow it? But ultimately, this woman's happiest day of her life has been marred, you know, regardless of which way you slice it. The other party, like I said, MB Khaled, he had a very, very good quote in The Sun when it came to this. He actually said, you know, Jaius did not follow procedures, but this is a great quote. He said, according to Jaius, it was not a raid. According to the press, it was a raid. But according to us, it is an embarrassment. True enough. Definitely one of those things that when they do these kinds of raids, surely there has to be approval met. Otherwise, you know, are you just willy-nilly dragging people out who you think are basically in the wrong? It brings shades, doesn't it, of the Salem witch hunts from like years ago. But regardless, you hope that this kind of thing doesn't crop up again now that they've been roundly chastised. The main headline for the star, on the other hand, goes the slightly more sensationalist route, talking about maids as sex slaves. Now, this is interesting. Basically, what happened was a lady was arrested because she threw a baby into a gaung or like a ditch near a uh, Gunting, and when the police were investigating, they found it linked back to what they call a sex ring. This one guy was basically agging big pimp and had all these ladies in a house illegally, mind you, and was hiring them out as sex saves. I swear, you can't make this up. It's like criminal minds. You know, it's like an, it's seriously out of a part of a criminal minds. It's like a, you know, it's a small crime wrapped in a bigger conspiracy. So the guy's been brought in. And it makes you wonder, you know, how did this kind of happen? you know, who exactly were they servicing. According to the story, it was actually in very affluent areas. So essentially, you're hiding it better, I, I suppose. So people were not suspecting. But thankfully, they've actually kind of captured it. But really, seriously, very criminal minds. Uh, the Malay Mail does the same. But it also has this big three-bar picture on illegal sand mining. And I was mentioning this in uh, the segment as well, saying now we have heavy equipment machinery. Now we have sand mining illegally. You wonder, what kind of ring are these guys like running you know are they building houses on the cheap is that what they're trying to do but yeah definitely crimes to keep an eye out for because if you're doing illegal heavy equipment and you're doing sand clearly they're about the same vein right i mean it's not as if they're you know kidnapping heavy equipment and you know baby birds or something utosan is interesting Francis Yeo got roundly chastised yesterday. If you went on Facebook, there was a lot of people sharing his article from Malay Mail Online talking about how cronyism in Malaysia should stop. And a lot of people, I guess, found this a little bit hard to swallow considering that YTL was the first independent power producer in the country. And it's the only IPP in the country that got a take or pay power purchase agreement. No other independent power producer has that. The reason they said for the lucrative contract or what some people could call 
allegedly called the sweetheart deal is because, you know, he said you had to take risks, we had to innovate, we were the first out the gate. So, of course, the price that we charge has to include the risks that we take. Fine. That's perfectly fine. I mean, that's a really, really good argument. But saying that this is the guy whose company just recently got awarded a new power plant by direct negotiation, along with a couple of other parties as well. One of them's TNB, one of them's related to the Johor Sultanate. You know, this is the guy who got that project by direct negotiation. And then the story comes out talking about no cronyism. So I think a lot of people find it a bit hard to swallow. Francis Yeo has actually, of course, come out and said, I was misconstrued. I was just talking candidly. People were thinking about it wrong. But that didn't stop. What do you call Uto-san from actually going Francis Yo di Bidas, which is our word of the day. I think he's basically chastised. You know, it it made a lot of people a little mad. And this one was interesting. Kasatuan Pegawai Pegawai Rendah Tenaga National Berhad reminded Francis Yo, saying that, you know, no, don't be arrogant until you forget what the government has done for you. You know, I don't know who to side on this argument, to be quite honest with you. But to be fair, there are arguments for both. You wonder, you know, who is actually the pot and who is actually the kettle. Moving on to the NST, uh, along with this wonderful photo of, of cars getting flooded uh, near the university because of all the rain we've been having. 90 days on for MH370. This is interesting because they said a tender for the search has is going to be sent out. They're going to go and find independent companies to do another search for the plane. Um, 90 days on, they've still found nothing. And it makes you wonder, should they have done this in the first place? But saying that, you know, they had a lot of resources. They had the US, they had Australia. Surely, you know, they're wondering, you know, what can an independent company do that a lot of other government agencies can't? But I think at this point in time, you really have no choice. You need to go another route or you need to hire somebody else. I have a very weird feeling and mark my words, whoever gets this tender will probably have a Discovery Channel crew in tow. Mark my words, you'll see that in about a year. Finally, we wrap up as always with Metro, which is the highest selling paper apparently in the country, one of the highest selling papers in the country. They also go into the dead baby chucking terribly, but they also do another little bit for kids where they talk about death toys. Jing, jing, jing. Basically, they're talking about toys that have come from China and maybe they're poisonous or they're made from materials, but it's not safe to ingest, especially for young kids. Not really a surprise in the sense that I think China has gotten this flack before, but uh, you know, it's definitely a nice little health warning from Haryan Metro. And that's it from me. I am Nadia Hassan and that's been your morning headlines for VFM 89.9. 